Hey, welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, I'm sorry, it's been six, maybe eight weeks since I posted a video. Got busy with a lot of projects around the house, outdoor stuff. Been running some stuff through the shop, built some doors, did some other things, but none of it was really, I thought, worth shooting a video over, so I just kind of took a break. And during that period of time, I took a little trip out to the West Coast with my wife, and we uh, got a chance to catch up with our youngest daughter who lives out there. And I also got to meet in person a friend of mine who I've made through the channel, Mr. Gary Moore. Gary's a very talented furniture restoration uh, expert. He's a tremendous woodworker and he's a very artistic furniture uh, repurposer. And uh, it was a, a real nice morning. We spent a couple hours chit-chatting and sharing ideas. And Gary, thanks for carving out some time. I really enjoyed it. I've also got my Pastiga Coffee Roasters Fuel, Fuel Your Hustle t-shirt on. These guys are in Corvallis and they are really, really good, I'm told. So if you're ever out in Corvallis, Oregon, and uh, you're looking for a cup of coffee, check these guys out. I appreciate the t-shirt. I'm going to uh, change it before we get to work on this or I'll ruin it for sure. Anyways, we're back. <clears throat> if things look a little different, Yes, I finally got a new camera. I got a DSLR, a Nikon 3300. I did a bunch of work for it and uh, I traded the work for the camera. And I also got a uh, directional mic attached to it. And if I don't forget, I will show you a picture of that hot stuff production equipment right now. So anyways, I'm still learning it. And uh, hopefully this will make your viewing a little bit better. Okay, enough talk. Right here. It's a mid-century modern desk. It's uh, in pretty good shape. Got some veneer damage. Got a broken uh, part of a drawer. And the finish is real tired. What we're going to do is refresh this. Do the repairs. Uh, refresh it. Color it. Maybe shoot another coat of lacquer on it. And get this ready for sale. It should be an interesting video. For those of you who are looking for some tips on how not to have to fully refinish a piece that's in okay shape but you want to make it look even better so let me go inside and change my clothes and when I come back we'll get started on this desk be with you in just a minute and here's our victim take a look at the top and you can see we've got a bunch of missing finish right here probably where they rested their arms on the, on the top <coughs> pretty good scratch here Another scratch here, and a scratch right there. And we got a bit of a ding right there. And coming down to the drawers, the top drawer looks pretty good. Got a missing piece of veneer here. A little damage right there. Some missing color there. And then the bottom drawer, when I first saw this desk, this drawer wouldn't fit. And the reason is, you can see back here, this drawer runner has been damaged and needs to be, needs to be reattached. So we'll get that taken care of. And then we have some color loss on the inside of the desk where chairs have been banged into it and such. Another spot right there. All right, so the first step in all of this is to clean it. There's my buddy, Stuart. He's ready to get to work. So we drag this outside. We'll mix up some Dawn dishwashing detergent, some TSP, maybe some crud cutter, and get this old girl scrubbed down. Now here's some TSP. This is what I mix in with my solution with some water and Dawn dishwashing detergent. I just eyeball it. If I have a particularly dirty piece, I'll uh, I'll throw some cut cutter in there as well, but I think we'll be fine just with the Dawn and the DSP. And, uh, there's our piece. Uh, use a scrubby pad to scrub it down. And she's all cleaned up, just sitting outside drying off. I've got the drawers sitting back here, they're all clean. And then we've got the one drawer is here and on the bench. You can see I've got it held on with an F clamp. 
and we're going to tackle this veneer repair here. And that veneer repair there. Let's work on this one here. It's an irregular shape, so what we're going to do is cut it triangularly this way and get a bigger chisel. And there we go. And this is the walnut veneer we're going to use to replace it with. This is real old. This is over 100 years old. This came off of a, uh, a radio cabinet that the top had been completely destroyed. I think I've talked about that in the past. And as you've seen me do in the past, I like to uh, template my veneer. You can also lay the other piece on it and then cut them both at the same time. Uh, that's another good technique, but I, I've always preferred to do it this way. I'm, I'm not really sure why, but I do. And I think that grain right there matches pretty well. And you can cut this out with a pair of scissors or a knife or whatever you choose to do. Uh, today, I'm going to use a scalpel. I had a number of viewer suggestions about using scalpels to trim oversized veneer. So I'll give it a whirl. And we got a great grain match. I'm just using yellow carpenter's glue here. Tight bond too if you're interested. On little veneer repairs you can also use cyanoacrylate glue which is a, has a much faster drying time obviously. It's really instantaneous when you use the accelerator. And we'll leave that right the way it is, <clears throat> and I'll I'll get working on this one and bring you right back. Okay, it took a little while. Uh, I don't know if it was me or the veneer, but I just kept breaking the veneer pieces. I guess it's time for me to break down and uh, buy some new walnut veneer. But anyways, what I did is I taped them down, and then I put a piece of wood across the top and some clamps to put pressure on the veneer repairs. And when they set up, we'll uh, we'll trim them off and get to, uh, to taking care of the finish issues on them. So there's the veneer repair, let's move on. Okay, while the veneer repair dries, I think what I want to do is start wet sanding this piece. I'm a little concerned about this area here where the finish is worn off. I'm feeling that the finish might be a little sticky here and uh, we want to make sure that that's gone before we do anything. So uh, just in case there's any silicone or any residual oils, I'm going to use mineral spirits as a lubricant. I've got 320 wet dry paper on. You've seen me use this air sander before. I really like it. So let's see how we do here.
Okay, this is the area that I was worried about. There's no stickiness at all. So whatever is there is off. Oh, and I've got uh, all the flat surfaces wet sanded with the sander. What I'm doing now is I'm just putting some soapy water on a piece of 320 wet dry and I'm lightly sanding all the other surfaces. The purpose of this is not to remove the top coat, it's not to remove the color, it's merely to remove the very very outside layer of top coat that may be oxidized and it scuffs it up, it helps the uh, next coat of lacquer bond to it and also the uh, color that we're going to put on it uh, go in. Uh, I found that with this technique that I use uh, this is an important part of, of what needs to be done. And I almost forgot, this uh, is the bottom drawer. Remember I told you it had a problem? Well, these drawer runners are just stapled in, and this one had pulled out. And uh, all it really needs is a little bit of glue down inside of here, and we'll put it right back where it belongs. Okay, this is the, the top of the front leg where it meets the, uh, the front drawer and you can see all the color is worn away here from probably a chair arm or something banging into that. There's lots of different ways you could do this. You could use dye stain, you could mix shellac and color together. What I like to do is just take some powdered, powdered color that matches. This is, uh, this is raw umber. And I just spray it or rub it on there with my bare finger and then just seal it in with a light coat of lacquer. And you can see that that's pretty well vanished. And as we continue to work on our color work and putting glazes and, and top coats on that, that's going to pretty much disappear. So I've got other places that I've got to do that same technique. You look down here at the bottom of the leg, we've got the same issue down there, and uh, we're going to get to it. For those of you that are wondering what I'm using here, I've shown it before, but this is just a powdered color, powdered pigment. This one's by Mohawk. They sell it as Blendall Powder Stain, and this one is raw umber. And then I just spray on over it with a can of Minwax lacquer in uh, in clear satin. I picked this up at the Home Depot. It's like seven bucks a can or something. Hey, we gave the glue about two hours to harden up. We're ready to move forward. While the glue was drying, I was inside the house editing the earlier footage. And like I said earlier, this is the first time I've used this camera and directional microphone. And I learned something. And that is, if the directional microphone's not pointing in your direction, it's hard to hear you. So there are sections earlier in the video that you've already seen that the, uh, the, the audio is not the best. I apologize for that. I'll try to get better with that as I move forward. We're going to move on to glazing this piece now, and uh, that's the next thing. And then after that, we'll shoot with some lacquer and we'll be done. Uh, I think we're about an hour and a half into this project. If I wasn't shooting a video, I could probably do this whole thing in two hours. So stick with us. We're going to move forward. And there's our veneer repair. And I uh, just trimmed it in a little bit of sanding and a little bit of color like we did elsewhere. I think if I take it this way you can see a little better what we did. But uh, we'll just get that colored in and that will blend right in. I'm pretty happy with that. So, so that drawer work is done and uh, we're moving on. Okay, get ready to put some glaze on. This is what I'm using. This is Mohawk's Heavy Body Finishers Glaze. What I do is I cut it quite a bit with Napa. I think I spoke misspoke earlier said mineral spirits. I prefer nap that flashes off quicker. And this is uh, Van Dyke Brown which is a, uh, a, a deep rich brown with a bit of red in it. And then all I do is put this on and let it set. And glaze is a color medium that's designed to go between top coat layers. And it just kind of goes in there, it fills any little scratches or cracks, and 
lays car right on top of uh, of the finish that we've worked to prepare for. Okay, we've got uh, a light coat of glaze on the entire piece. I think you can see how it's pulled all the colors in. It's gotten rid of the white spots. Uh, we've got you know a little scratch and a little ding here and there. We're just going to leave those. Uh, we'll get this top coated with lacquer and take a look at it. But right now we're just going to leave it. But we, we've got, here's the drawers done, the desk is done. We're going to give us about 15, 20 minutes, and then we're going to shoot a coat of lacquer on it. So stand by, we're almost done. Okay, I've got the desk uh, outside on some 2x4s. I'd ideally like to flip it over on a table, but with uh, the glaze on the top, I don't want to run the risk of disturbing it. So I'm going to shoot the first coat of lacquer as it is. Here's the top of the desk. You're in the shade on purpose because once that sun breaks over the garage, it gets extremely hot, and it'll uh, it'll affect the way the lacquer dries. But that's it. And for the rest of the afternoon, I'll play around shooting lacquer coat on it and rubbing it out, and just working on getting the finish the way I want it. And uh, I'll bring you back and uh, show you how it came out and we'll talk a little bit about what we did and uh, and we'll call it a video. So there you go, we'll see you in a little bit. And there she is. She's all done, I think she looks great. If you remember we had an awful lot of worn finish on this, a couple of broken pieces of veneer and uh, places where the color was completely gone. We took care of all that. We got this piece brought back so it's attractive. It'll look nice in somebody's home. It's got a couple little, you know, little dings and scratches in it that don't show because they've been colored, but they're still there, and we call that patina when you're dealing with an older piece of furniture. But I think it came out great. I'm real happy that uh, we did what we did, and I think someone's really going to like it. So anyways, from our shop just outside Kennesaw, here in North Georgia. Best regards, thanks for watching, take good care, and remember, it's just wood, color, and some shiny stuff. We'll see you next video. Bye.